Hello and welcome to the My Heritage webinar series. I'm Miriam Pierre Louis, your host, broadcasting to you live from Eastern Massachusetts. Today we have Masha Novak, who is live with us in Israel for her class, My Heritage Mobile App All New Features from 2020. Thanks to Masha and thanks to all of you for registering for today's live webinar. So, wherever and whenever you are, glad to have you with us. We are pleased to announce the publication of two important collections from the French Department of Nord, Nord Civil Bursts, 1820 to 1915, and Nord Civil Deaths, 1820 to 1935. The collections together uh, comprise 13.7 million historical records and feature a detailed searchable index that is only available on MyHeritage. These join the Nord Civil Marriage records, which were previously released. And now to introduce our speaker. Masha Novak is responsible for both the Android and the iOS platforms of the MyHeritage mobile app. She leads a great team of developers, QA engineers, and a designer to create the best features and user experience for MyHeritage users. Please put your virtual hands together and let's give Masha Novak a nice warm webinar. Welcome. Masha, how are you? Welcome to the show. Hello. Uh, I'm good. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh. Very excited. Yeah, we're excited to learn about the, the mobile app features. I'm going to switch over to your screen right now. That looks great. The time is all yours, Masha. OK, thank you so much. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, my name is uh, Masha Novak, and I'm the product manager for the MyHeritage mobile app, uh, available both for iOS and uh, Android. Um, today, I would like uh, to talk to you about uh, some of our photo features that we have. Um, so again, thank you for joining, and I hope you're all safe and well. Uh, these days, and uh, we'll begin. So uh, if you haven't uh, downloaded uh, our mobile app uh, yet, you can do it today. You can go to the App Store or to the Google Play and uh, download it from there, or you can go to myheritage.com slash mobile and uh, use the links uh, to download the mobile app from there. So our, our agenda for today uh, I would like to share with you um, the flow of three uh, major photo features that we have. Uh, before uh, diving into those features, I would like to share with you how you can upload photos, scan photos, or add information to the photo section on the MyHeritage mobile app in order to use these features. After we'll do that, we'll uh, dive into the first uh, feature that I'm actually most excited about which is the MyHeritage Photo Storyteller. It's actually a brand new feature that we have uh, released today uh, in a gradual exposure. That means that you will all get uh, this feature in the upcoming days. Um, so we'll get to that uh, later on today. Um, the next one will be the MyHeritage in color. And the last uh, will be MyHeritage Photo Enhancer. So this is our agenda for today, and uh, I'm going to begin with the upload uh, flow. So um, all uh, the slides that we'll be sharing with you today are actually uh, screenshots from uh, an iOS uh, device. Um, both iOS and Android app, uh, both the design and functionality is quite similar. So it will be quite straightforward uh, if you are using an Android device. Okay, so before I begin the, the upload flow, I would like um, all of our features today are um, around the photo section. So uh, I will explain how you can get to the photo section um, via the mobile app. You can do it in two ways. The first one is once you open the app, you will get to the home screen, which you can see here on my screen. Uh, in the home screen on the bottom part, you can actually see the shortcuts. You can use the photos shortcut to get to the photos uh, section. Another uh, possible uh, way to get there is actually to use the side menu bar and uh, tap photos from there. Actually, both ways will lead you to your photo gallery uh, photo section on uh, my Heritage mobile app. So you can see here my photo section. It actually has some photos that I have already uploaded there. 
So now I will start by um, walking you through on how you can upload photos to the photo section if you haven't done that uh, yet or if you wish to add more photos to there. So we'll start by tapping the plus button on the bottom uh, part of the screen. It will open a menu where we can choose to add photos or to scan photos. We'll start with the add photos flow and we'll get to the scan photos flow later on. So once I tap the add photos, if it's your first time uploading photos to the MyHeritage app, uh, we will ask you for permissions. You will have to uh, actually approve two permissions. The first one will be the permission to your camera. And the second one will be permission to your photos on your mobile phone. When you approve the permission to the photos on your mobile phone, you can actually choose to give access to all of your photos or to give access to um, selected photos that you wish to upload. So you can choose whatever works for you. And then uh, uh, the photo gallery on your phone will open if you approve the uh, permissions. So here, this is my photo from my mobile phone. And now I will choose the photos that I wish to upload. So once I choose a photo, you'll see an indication on the top uh, corner of, this, of the image uh, that this uh, photo has been selected. Just a second. Once I'm uh, actually done with the uh, photo selection, I'll tap next. And then I'll get into a, another screen that is actually part of the preview of the photo upload process. Here I can uh, do several actions before uploading the photo that I've selected to the MyHeritage uh, photo section. The first one is that if I chose by accident the photo that I do not wish to upload, I can always uh, tap the bin icon on the top and remove it from the upload flow. Another thing that I can do is actually tap the plus button on the bottom part of the screen and go back to the gallery from the, my uh, phone and choose additional photos that I wish to upload. Once I'm uh, um, done with selecting the photos that I wish to upload, I can perform several, several actions on top of them. Let's take this photo, for example, which is my grandmother and her mother. Uh, that you see, it's not really cropped very well on the corners. So in order to edit it, I will tap the edit photo icon on the top menu bar, which is selected, you see here. And it will actually take me into the edit mode where I can crop, rotate, or resize uh, the image that I've uh, chosen. So here I'll drag the corners of the um, uh, crop action to actually uh, fit the uh, photo exactly on the corners. Once I'm done, I'll just tap down and you can see that the image is resized to the dimension that uh, I wanted on the corners. Now I'll go to another image that you see here that is now um, vertical and not horizontal. Here I would, would like to edit the um, edit photo uh, section again, area again and rotate it until I get the um, wanted results as you see here. Once I've done that, I'll tap done. And another last thing that I want to show you on as part of the upload flow is how I can add more information to a photo before I upload it. So now I'll choose the third image that I wish to uh, add information on top of, which is this one. This is actually my grandmother. So here you can see there is uh, several fields that I can add. The first one is photo title. The second one is date and the third one is place i can tap on each one of them and it will actually allow me to insert some more uh, information so here is my grandmother in her childhood i uh, added the date and the place once i'm done i will tap done so now that i have finished all the wanted actions on top of the photos that i wish to upload i will tap upload and actually it will take me back to the photo section on the MyHeritage um, photo uh, section. And uh, I will see a loader that will indicate that the upload process is happening. 
once the upload process will be finished, uh, all the photos that I've uploaded, you will be able to see them in the photo section. And also you'll get an indication that the upload process uh, is completed. So the additional flow that you can uh, do is actually scan a photo. It's the same flow that we've seen before that you can tap the plus button on the bottom and then actually choose the scan photo. Actually, I recommend you use, to use the scan photo if you are scanning documents with small details. Um, and now you'll see why. Once I tap the scan document, the screen will open. And once I uh, move my uh, mobile phone on top of the image that I want to scan, you'll see this uh, orange rectangle that indicates uh, the image that I wish to capture. So once the image is captured uh, and the line properly, I can scan the image. And now I can align the borders. So here you can see that once I tap uh, the corner of the image, uh, it actually indicates me where it ends. So I can um, adjust it the way I want it to. If I'm not uh, satisfied with the scanning, of the photo, I can always go back and retake uh, the, uh, the image again. If I'm satisfied and everything is uh, working properly for me, I can tap next. And then actually go to the preview where I can see how the photo will look like. Here I can actually uh, rotate the image or play with the colors. And once I'm done, I can tap save and this image will be uploaded to my uh, photo section in uh, the MyHeritage mobile app. So in this flow, uh, the scanning flow is actually, is actually different from the uh, upload flow uh, in two ways. You can scan only one photo at a time. And another thing is that you cannot add additional information to the photo as part of the scanning process. So now you see this uh, photo has been uploaded, but with no information. Now I will show you how you can uh, add additional information to the photo that has been already uploaded to my heritage photo section. So here, I, I'll go back to the photo section and choose an image. Once I choose the photo, I will be able to see the exact same three fields that I've, we've seen before as part of the upload process. The add title, date, and place. I can tap any one of them and then edit photo information screen will open where I can add the name of the, the title of the photo, the date, the place, and an additional field that's actually the description of the photo. Under the underline, I can see some technical details about the, the photo, like who uploaded it, when it was uploaded, the dimensions and the size of it. So this is a, an image of me and my mom. So that's what I added here on the title. Once I've added everything I want to do, I'll tap save. And actually you will see this information that it's added uh, on top of the photo on the bottom part of the screen. So there's an additional way of uh, doing that. You can always go to the more uh, icon on the top menu bar. Once you tap it, you need to choose the edit photo info, info, info. And this will open the same screen that we've seen before. So here you can add additional information or edit the information you have already uh, inserted there. And uh, if there is any change, you can save it. So this sums up the basic uh, 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 things you can do in order to upload or scan photos. And now I want to dive right into the first feature that I wish to share with you, which is the MyHeritage Photo Storyteller. It's actually a very uh, interesting feature that allows you to record stories behind your uh, family photos. It allows you actually to uh, tell the story in your own words or record your relatives uh, telling the story uh, the way it happened. This is actually a feature that uh, was uh, suggested inside of my heritage uh, by uh, our head of research, Roy Mendel. Uh, he felt the need to capture the stories behind his own family photos. And this is uh, how this feature was born. So 
I would like to uh, go over the flow of how we can record the stories behind the photo. So um, we're still in the photo section, as we've seen before. I'll tap a, a photo that I wish to uh, record the story on top of it. So it will open me the photo viewer where, my, where I can view the photo. Here you'll be able to see actually an, a microphone icon on the uh, bottom part. Once you tap it, you'll see a screen where you can start to record the story. Once you tap the recording button, you can actually start telling the story or record your relatives telling it. So once you uh, think you're done uh, or finished telling the story, you can always tap stop and it will take you to a preview where you can listen to the story you just told and decide if it works for you. So if you decide that you want to uh, record it for, again from the beginning, you can always uh, choose the uh, trash bin and erase it. You will see a confirmation that maybe just to verify that you didn't do it by mistake. And uh, if you delete the recording, you'll go back to the beginning of the recording flow. So here, I will now delete this one. I will actually save it. Once the recording is saved, you'll see a loader on top of the microphone icon. And once the recording will be saved, you'll see an indication that the recording was saved. Also, the microphone icon will be replaced with a play icon, as you can see here in the image below. Now, you can actually uh, tap the play button in order to listen to the recording. This is actually an indication also to the, the, uh, this uh, photo uh, has a recording attached to it. So once I uh, tap the play button, the player will open and it will start to play automatically. So here you can see the uh, person that uh, recorded this uh, recording, the timestamp. You can uh, move the uh, player bar and jump uh, forward and backwards. You can always choose to uh, delete the recording you just made. You can uh, tap pause and play, or you can share it. If you go back uh, to the photo gallery, you will actually see a play indication. This is also an indication that the photo has a story recorded on top of it. So now I wish to share, uh, to show you how you can share your recording. Once you tap the share icon, if it's your first time sharing a story, you'll actually get a pop-up that will explain that we are actually creating a video that will combine the image and the recording to a video format. And then you'll be able to share it uh, via, via any uh, application you have installed on your mobile app that supports the video sharing. So here, I chose to uh, share on Facebook. So here is like a preview of the upload. I can add something about this photo that I wish to post. I can always tap play and see how, uh, how it looks. Once I'm done, I can tap next. And actually, this is how it will look like once I upload it to, it to Facebook. So this is actually a very um, interesting feature. And I think it will help us all preserve memories and stories that happened in images that we do not appear or preserve memories of our families in a better way, especially in times uh, where everyone is uh, at home. Uh, so I'm very excited for you to uh, start using it. It will get to all of you in a couple of days, so you'll be able to try it. So now we're moving on to the next feature, which is my heritage in color. It's also a feature that uh, involves photos, and it actually allows you to take your black and white photos and colorize them. It actually also gives you a... Um, an understanding of, of how the uh, photos might have looked like if they have been taken today. You may notice some uh, new details that you haven't noticed before. So it's a very uh, amazing feature as well. So here I will just remind you how we can go back uh, to the photo section in order to colorize the photos. 
So you can do it again from the home screen via the shortcut of the photos or through the menu bar uh, where you can tap photos. Both ways will lead you to the photo section. Here I will choose a, a photo that I have already uploaded to my photo section and the, it has to be a black and white photo. I will tap it and actually view the photo here. Uh, once I view the photo, I can actually always uh, swipe to the right and to the left, and it will uh, actually allow me to view all the uh, photos that I have in the gallery. Uh, on the top part of the screen, on the menu bar, you'll see a circle, a colored circle. Once you tap it, you will actually start the colorization process. You'll see this uh, loader that uh, indicates that the colorization process has begun. Once it will be ready, you'll see the next screen, which will, you'll see the slider on top of the photo. On the left side of this photo is actually the ori original black and white photo. And on the right, you will see the colorized uh, photo, the after, the outcome. So here you can uh, use the slider to move uh, back and forth and see the results. But actually, the results are quite amazing. Another indication that you will be able to see is actually this icon on the top that now is filled with colors. This actually indicates that the photo has been colorized. Also, as I told you before, you can always swipe between the photos in your photo section. Once you do that, the slider that you see here will disappear. That means that if you go back to a colorized photo, the slider will no longer be here. In order to bring it back, you'll have to tap again on the colorized icon for colorized photos. So now I want to go over a few actions you can apply to this photo. So the first one is the share. You can tap the share icon on the top menu bar and choose if you wish to share an original photo, meaning the black and white, or the colorized version of the photo that you just colorized. Another thing you can do is download it to your device. You can tap the more icon on the menu bar and tap the save to library. Once you tap that, you'll get this uh, menu that you can choose from. You can choose to uh, save the original photo, the colorize or a comparison. Once you choose to save a comparison, you'll actually get this outcome that you see here. On the top, you'll get the original photo and on the bottom, you will get the colorized one. This really helps you to understand the amazing outcome that the colorization process has done. So here you can see actually the results. They're quite amazing. So another thing you can do is delete the photo. You go again to the more icon on the top menu bar, tap the delete options, and again here, you see um, the options you can delete the original or the, or the colorized. If you choose to delete the original, you will actually get a pop up that notifies you that you will be deleting both the original version and the colorized version. So you will not uh, be able to uh, leave only the, orig uh, the colorized version in your photo section. Another thing you can do is tag individuals from your tree. So by tapping the tag icon on the top, you'll see that all the faces that are identified um, are marked, or you can mark yourself and just draw squares on top of faces you wish to tag. Once you uh, draw a square, you can tap on it, and actually it will open you. Um, the, search, the search is actually, um, where you can start typing the person's name. This name should be one of the persons you have in your family tree. So once I start typing, I will get results of uh, individuals from my family tree. And here I can choose the individual that I wish to tag to this face. Once I do that, I'll get the indication that this face was tagged and I can choose to save it or to um, delete this tag and go and select another individual if I did it by mistake. 
So here I will uh, choose to save this tag. And actually I can go ahead and tag additional faces in this photo. So I'm going to, uh, once you colorize the photo, you'll actually see the gallery, this uh, colorized indication, actually the colored circle, that indicates that a photo has been colorized. Another indication, as I showed you before, is actually the field uh, circle filled with colors. So those two are indications that the photo has been uh, colorized. So now I'll show you a few examples. You can really see the details of how the uh, black and white photo has been colored. So this is the first one. This is another example. And here's the last one for today. Take it, pay attention to the details of, of the food on the table. It's very nice and also the calendar. Very interesting. So now we're getting to our last feature that is called my Heritage Photo Enhancer. It actually allows you to bl uh, bring uh, blurry faces into sharp focus. You can use this feature both for black and white and colorized photos. So here I will choose a photo from a gallery. Once I tap it, I'll view it. On the top menu bar, you can see the magic wand. The magic wand actually represents the enhancement feature. Once I tap it, the enhancement process will start. Once the enhancement process is uh, finished, I will actually see this uh, new view where I can see the main image and actually the faces that the algorithm identified. I will see the slider on top of it and I will be able to play, uh, to move with the slider back and forth and see the results. In images like you see here before you, where you see there is uh, many uh, individuals in it and also the faces are really small, it will be very hard to see the um, amazing sharpness that the faces uh, uh, turned out to be uh, by viewing the main image. In order to view uh, the outcome, it will be better to see it via viewing the faces themselves. So if, if you have here um, more than uh, uh, 10 faces, you'll be able to scroll and see all the faces that were identified by the algorithm. The algorithm can identify up to 20 faces. So now we'll see how we see the results in each face. I'll tap the face that I wish to view and actually move with the slider to the left to see the results. So on the left, you see the before and on the right, you see the after. So this is the results. This is actually bringing the face into a sharp focus. Now we'll move to the second phase. <clears throat> and we can go over and view all the faces. Now I'll show you uh, several actions that you can do. There are different actions that you can perform on the main photo and on the uh, faces photos. So once I'm viewing a face, the actions that I perform are on top of the uh, face photo and not on top of the main photo. That means that if I tap share, and I choose to share the original or the enhanced photo, it will share the face photo, meaning what you see here on the screen. An additional thing that you can do is tap the more icon on the top menu bar and choose save. Once you tap the save, you um, have another menu that you can choose from. You, cho uh, you can choose to save original, enhanced, or comparison photo. I tap the comparison, and here you will be able to save to your mobile phone. Actually, the before and after the, uh, the face before it was enhanced, and then the image of the face after it was enhanced to really see the amazing outcome.
another thing that we can do is actually hide this face. If we tap the hide this face, it will actually remove the face identification from um, the enhancement process. Sometimes the algorithm um, makes the faces look very weird and maybe you wish to remove it and not see it. If you have removed the face by mistake, you can always go and delete the enhancement process and do it again and the face will uh, appear back as uh, in the identified section. Another thing that I think is very important in this feature is to tag the individuals because here you can see the faces and you can go over each uh, one of the faces that they are identified. You can actually tag them very easily. So here I will tap the tag icon on the top menu bar. Now uh, we'll be able to type and search from the individuals in my tree. Once I'll find the individual that I wish to tag, I will tap on him and he will be added to this face. Actually, this face will be tagged. I can uh, here again, choose to save or to delete the tag. I will choose to save. And then this will actually indicate me that the, this face is actually tagged already. So here, in this way, I can go over each and every face that is identified and tag all the people really quickly. Another thing is the enhancement indication. As I told you, the magic wand represents the enhancement process. So here, if I go to the photo section, I will see a, a magic wand on the photo that indicates that the photo has been enhanced. Also, if I go back to the photo, I will see here the magic wand again that is filled. So this is also in the, is an indication that the a photo has been enhanced. So this is one example that you can see. And this is actually another example. You can see that this image is a very old one. It was uh, actually printed on the rough uh, paper. So here it, it's an image that has been enhanced and colorized. So another thing that it's important to mention is that we're staying true to the source, meaning that we're always keeping the original version in place. We never touch the original one. Each time you perform a colorization or enhancement, we save it under an additional version. Also, uh, on the bottom part of the screen here, you'll see an indication that the photo has been um, um, actually colorized or enhanced. We add the, uh, the palette to colorized photos. Actually, it will be like a watermark. And uh, if I enhance, I uh, will add the magic wand uh, icon. So this way, once you share or show this uh, for a photo to friends, you'll know that this photo has been uh, um, changed from the original. And we will always save the original version intact. So that's it for today. Thank you so much. Masha, that was great. Uh, you wouldn't believe how many questions there are in uh, the audience panel. Uh, but I'm going to take back the controls right now. We'll give you a break for a minute or so, and I will do the announcements. Then we'll bring you back on for the Q&A, OK? All right, so let's. Uh... OK few announcements here. Our next webinar for the My Heritage series is Introducing Genetic Groups by Rand Sneer. Uh, that should be in two weeks from today, I believe. Uh, so look for that at uh, familytreewebinars.com and you'll be able to register for that. All right, we do have some door prizes to give out today and these are available to anyone who is here in our live audience watching the uh, webinar. A uh, quick question for you. Is there anybody 
on today who is uh, watching a webinar for the very first time, a legacy webinar, or a My Heritage Series webinar uh, for the very first time. Go to your control panel and say, yes, me, first time, whatever. So let's see. Uh, Joanne is saying yes. Uh, Joan is saying uh, first time. Wow. Gretchen, Polly, Jean, Susan, Linnea, Walter, Leona, Alexander. Wow. There are so many people here. Cynthia, Barry, Helen, Phyllis. Great to have you all here. So happy that you've joined us uh, for the start of our season here in January and for the start of our My Heritage Series webinars. So wonderful to see you all here today. All right. Well, since you're here, you are all eligible for the prize. And our first door prize is a one-year My Heritage Complete Plan. Uh, so this is broken into two parts. There's the Premium Plus Family Site Subscription, uh, and that's where you build your tree and you have unlimited uh, capacity for that. And you get pri priority email support and Family Tree Builder Premium and all sorts of great stuff to work on your tree. And then the other side of your uh, prize is the data subscription. And that's access to 12 billion historical records, some of, some of which I told you right at the start, the new um, uh, Department du Nord uh, French records, which just came out last week. Uh, so 12 billion historical records, birth, marriages, death records, census, military, immigration records. One of my favorites, personally, are the newspaper uh, records on my heritage. I have found so much information about my own family in those records. Uh, the yearbooks and the directories, which are particularly special because of how they've indexed them. They've indexed things that nobody else has. Um, so lots of uh, records from around the world. So with this prize, you get everything. You get the family tree and you get the data subscription. So with that, I need to pick uh, somebody for this prize. And that is going to go to Ruben Arias. So Ruben, congratulations. You have just won a one-year MyHeritage Complete Plan. Oops, I went too fast. There we go. Our second prize today is a MyHeritage DNA test. And with this, you can find out uh, your ethnicity, and you can also connect to DNA family matches. And I like this because I have some recent ancestry uh, from Europe, and MyHeritage has the strongest connection to, um, well, Europeans right now. What I mean by that, I guess, is that they have many Europeans who are testing, so I can actually connect to people in Europe who are still living there, who are related to my ancestors who immigrated to the United States in the early um, 20th century, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, I need to pick somebody here for this, and that is going to go to uh, Sandra Douglas. So congratulations, Sandra. You are going to get a DNA test. You're going to have a lot of fun with this. Um, and be sure to check out the upcoming MyHeritage webinars because there's a lot on um, DNA at MyHeritage, and that will help you learn how to use your results. Okay. Let's get back to the questions. And I'm going to bring Masha back on for this. And uh, Masha, there are so many questions. Uh, <laughs> first, my own question. OK, so for somebody like me who has used my heritage primarily on the desktop, if I have pictures already uploaded to the desktop that I haven't done anything with, you know, the, just the original picture, if I use the app on my phone, will I see those pictures on my phone? Yes, of course. Okay, great. Once you downloaded the app, you will actually log in and you will see everything that you have on your website or on the mobile app, meaning all the photos that you've uploaded, you will be able to see them in the photo section on the mobile app. And actually, another thing that I think it's important to say that I maybe I forgot is that the storyteller feature is available currently only on the mobile app. Okay. Um, all right. And another question that seems to be particularly 
prevalent today is the questions about iPad. Is this um, app available on the iPad? Because it seems like some people who were on the iPad were having trouble um, uploading the app. Yeah, it is available on the iPad. Um, you can always go to the App Store or the Google Play and download it directly from there. Okay. Uh, so one of the um, audience members was telling me that she got a message saying that she needs iOS 12 to or later to view the app, right? That would be correct? Yeah, I think so, yeah. We we'll support only 12 every day. Yeah, because currently, I know from my own phone and my own iPad that we're currently at iOS 14.3. Um, so if you're not, uh, so, so 12 is, is a couple versions back. So, uh, they're not even asking you to be at the latest one now. So you would probably want to go into your device and figure out, um, how to, to upload to a more current version of iOS. And that might solve your iPad, um, version. If, if somebody's having trouble, um, uploading the app onto their iPad, where should they go for um, help? Um, you can always uh, contact support. Um, I heard there's support on the website. And they will be able to help you. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. So, so myheritage.com. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Oh, June wants to know uh, what um, DPI does the... Um, photo got uploaded at is it, it so you were scanning at the beginning right the, the first at the beginning I showed you how to upload and then I showed you how to scan okay so if you wish to see like the resolution and the dimension and the sizes of the image that was uh, scanned or uh, uploaded you can always go to the um, in the photo uh, go to the more menu and see the edit photo info and there you will see uh, actually the dimensions and the sizes of the image. So does it actually let you scan at different resolutions or does is there just no, one? No, just one resolution. So is it scanning at 72 DPI or what, what is it scanning at? Uh, actually, I'll have to check and come back uh, okay. with an answer. So if you can uh, email me the question okay. at uh, masha.novak at myheritage.com. Okay, or, you know, they can just go to the app and press the three dots and get the information there for the resolution. I think that's yeah. what you just said, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So try that first before you send your emails. All right. Um, oh, so Brenna wants to know, once you upload a photo, tag it, record the details about the photo, put them in the albums, is there a way to print albums with all these details included or download the albums with the details? You mean albums that uh, have several uh, photos in there, in them? Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that's what she means. I, I, I like think currently, yeah, yeah. I think like, for instance, you show the picture with like 10 people in it. And she's talking mm -hmm. about if you add all those details of the people's names, so you add 10 people connected to the photo, and maybe you add a title and all this kind of stuff, when you download the, the photo, will it include those picture, in those details? Or is that um, only... No, so once you download it, it will be downloaded to your uh, photos on your mobile phone, so the data will not uh, be downloaded together with it. It stays uh, on the MyHeritage account, but it's good to tag people because this way actually you'll know the people that uh, are in this photo and also other members on your family tree will be able to see photos of them that you might have uploaded um, and also see the details about the photo that they may have never known or uh, seen before. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Connie would like to know, is there a time limit on recording a story for a photo? Yes. Yeah, so currently uh, we support one hour of recording. Wow. Uh, <laughs> That's a yeah. lot. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a lot. 
if we'll see that uh, there's a higher demand, we'll change it. But it's currently one hour. And is there <laughs> is there any limit on photos? Say you have a, a My Heritage um, complete plan. Uh, is yeah. So the, there is a, if I'm not mistaken, like a 500 uh, megabytes okay. of storage. Once uh, for if you are uh, like a basic user. And uh, once you pass that, you'll have to upgrade to a complete subscription mm -hmm. where uh, actually there's no limit. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Good mm -hmm. to know. All right. So we answered the question about the iPad. So we have confirmed that iPad does work with the app. Um, Petriva wants to know, do you have to retain the photos on your phone once you upload it to MyHeritage? So say she had the photos on her phone and then use the app to upload the photos. Does she have to keep it in her photo app once it's on the uh, MyHeritage? No, no, because once it's on my, the, my Heritage account that she have uploaded it, it will be there until she decides to delete it. Okay, so or... just don't delete it from the MyHeritage app if you're going to delete it from your other photos app. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll yeah. lose it everywhere. All right. Um, let's see. Gretchen wants to know, can one add more information to a recording? I'm not sure exactly what you mean. Do you mean, Gretchen, to, to start recording and then go back and add more? Or so maybe you could clarify that for us, Gretchen. Oh. I'm just trying to see if she... answered there. I'm not sure about that one. Uh, let's see. So we already covered the time limit. That was 60 minutes. Um, oh, so so Chris's um, app isn't showing the microphone. Um, what yeah, as I said, the, we released it in a gradual release. That means it will take several days for everyone uh, to get this oh, update. Okay. Once you do, you'll be able to uh, actually download the update of the application from the store, from the App Store or the Google Play. And once you do that, you'll see what's new for for the Storyteller feature. Uh, you'll also be able to see it in the app descriptions in the store as well. So stay tuned. <laughs> okay, great. All right, so that was somebody else's question. Do they have to download the app again or will it automatically update that's uh, that actually depends on the uh, settings of the their OS and their phone. So if they change the settings, that it will automatically update all the uh, apps on the phone. That will do it. Will do it once there is an update. If no, you'll uh, have to go to the store and update it. Okay. All right, and we've already covered that. So. Let's see. Walter wants to know, if I create content in my account, are family members able to view this without having a paid account? Yes. Once uh, you have members, uh, that you have, uh, you, you will have to invite them to actually view the site. Uh, and then they can use your account to view this. So it, so are they, when you invite people, are they creating a free account and then have access to viewing that person's information or how does yeah, that? Yeah, it's viewing your family tree, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And Ken is asking, can I upload multiple photos at one time? Yes, of course. No. Actually, once you um, choose the add photos, you can choose... Um, multiple photos from your photos from your mobile phone uh, and upload them yep and what about uh the size of the photos is there any minimum or maximum size for the photo um there are actually a minimum size for the colorization and the enhancement it should be um if i'm not mistaken like a, um 250 on 250 like a square minimum square right right and that uh, that's pretty small so you know it makes yeah that, that, so that's that makes like sense. the minimum yeah. right 
and there is no uh, maximum limit. So, okay. Um, so Sunny is saying that all the photos remain on my heritage. If so, how can they be saved to my computer files? So if, if she uploads them um, through the app and then later she goes to her desktop mm -hmm. and accesses it there, is there an option to download them to her computer? Yes, of course. Like once you upload it via the app, you can always go to your account on the web and uh, enter the photos that you wish to save and actually download them to your um, PC. Okay, and Anita had kind of the opposite question. She says, if you delete photos in the mobile app, will it also delete from the MyHeritage site, from the computer yes, or anywhere? Yes, actually, yeah. All the actions you do once you're logged into your MyHeritage account are reflected on all platforms, okay. meaning if you add photos on the mobile app, it will be added to your MyHeritage account on your website and the other way around. And also for the delete, for the colorization process and for the enhancement process. So I don't know if this is why Anita is asking the question, but this is what it makes me think of. Um, when people have limited uh, memory on their phones, so say you upload pictures to the MyHeritage app, is it is it also staying resident on your phone? Like, is it taking up your memory on your phone? Or is it just in the cloud? No, it's in the cloud. Okay, so you so you don't have to worry about it filling up your phone. Okay. Yeah, no. no. That's good to know. Um, all right, yeah, so uh, Hope was asking about she was having some trouble and she got the error that said it needs to be 256 by 256. So Hope, it sounds like the picture that you had on your phone was maybe a thumbnail or something. It sounds like it was too small. So I don't think you did take it with your phone. So you somehow you ended up with that, but you, you'll need to find a bigger picture um, to add to your phone if you want to upload it to my heritage. Okay, let's see yeah. here. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, okay. This is sort of a practical thing. Uh, Cherry is saying um, when you have a very old photo and you want to add a date to the photo, how can you move quickly from the current date to like a date in 1960, something like that? So um, once you want to add a date, there is like two options. The first one is a, an option that you can use the um, scrollers to actually choose the date. And the second one is actually a free text where you can type. So you can also go ahead and type the date okay. that you wish to uh, add. Yeah, that would be a lot quicker sometimes. Um, yeah. Okay, if I say your name wrong, I'm so sorry, is Vizdana? She wants to know, is there any possibility to tag someone on a photo who isn't on my family tree? Uh, yeah, so the question, uh, the answer is no, because um, you, you can tag only people that are a part of your family tree. Okay. So maybe you should uh, like add him before if he's part of the family. Um, so but you could add people in the title, right? That aren't necessarily yeah, in the tree. Yeah, but uh, you cannot tag them right, because right. once you tag them, it is associated with that individual from the tree. And also, if you go to that individual's profile, uh, you under the photo tab, you'll be able to see all the photos that are tagged with that individual. So um, it's not possible to tag is someone that is not in your family tree. Okay. All right. Annette has a modern world problem. Uh, she took a picture of her son last year, and her son has hair that is dyed blue. And when she colorized the photo, uh, it took the hair color out. So is there any way to... Is it any way to stop the program from applying logical colors to people's hair 
as opposed to modern actual ones. Yeah, so if I understand correctly, she took a, a, a photo that is already in color and applied the colorization uh, uh, feature, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure uh, what the, uh, I mean, I would assume that, but I don't know. But she did take a, a modern picture and colorized it in my heritage. So yeah, it yeah, sounds like so, it, yeah. So if this is the case, she can go to the uh, MyHeritage uh, website and uh, choose the photo there. And actually, the, there's like a colorization settings there that you can play and change and uh, see maybe it will help her uh, to uh, eliminate the color from the hair. All right. Um, let's see, I'm just, Dale has asked um, a long question here. I'm just trying to scan through it to see. Okay. All right. So basically Dale is saying um, that he went and sharpened and colorized some pictures and he actually preferred the black and white um, version better, but he couldn't figure out how to go back. Mm -hmm. um, so what was what was so, the process for for removing either the colorization or the sharpening? Yeah, so in order to remove uh, the colorization or the enhancement or both of them, you can go to the uh, more menu, the more icon on the top menu bar and choose delete photo. And there, choose to delete or the enhanced or the colorized or the enhanced and colorized version. And this will actually bring uh, back the original uh, view of the uh, photo. Okay, that's great. And it gives you the options to do one or the other. You don't have to, you can get rid of the sharpening without getting rid of the color. So that's great. Um, yeah, no, meaning no, not exactly because if you did both actions, it will be able you will be able to remove only both of them. Okay. So, oh, I see. Okay. I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, so Carolyn wants to know. If you need to use the photo enhancer to clear the blurriness and also want to colorize, which should you do first? So that's a great question because uh, it doesn't matter actually which way action you prefer first because the outcome will be similar on both sides. Like in the background, we'll do both of the actions. So you will see the same results in both scenarios. Uh, Wayne wants to know if you can manually tag a name. I'm guessing. What, what do you mean? I, well, I'm. Like I'm guessing he means. Someone that is not from your family tree, right? I'm. I'm guessing if he means uh, without the little. Well, this is how I interpret it, but I'm not sure. Without the little um, photo circles, you know how the photo circles are of the faces. I don't know. I don't know. Wayne, can you clarify so, that? <laughs> I think I understand, but okay. um, like once you choose the tag icon, uh, so you can manually draw the square ah, okay. on top of the face you wish to tag. Maybe that's what he meant. Okay, and you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's probably what he meant. You're right. Uh, let's see here. And and Wayne, we already said that you can enhance a photo that has been colored. Ah, yeah, sure. so here's a, a question from Rhonda. She says, can researchers using my Heritage Library Edition use this feature? Can researchers use the app? If they're um, if they're doing the library the edition. Library. What do you mean by library edition? Uh, well, I'm, a, I'm guessing that there's a MyHeritage Library edition that's available for institutions. Or, oh, okay. Um, yeah, well, I will have to check that, to double check that, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure that that would work because, you know, when you have an app, you are saving things to your account. 
your personal account. And when you have a library edition, you don't have a personal account. You can't, you can only access the data. I don't think you can access the trees because uh, it's a public computer. But uh, I did put the, um, so, so you have two options. Um, Masha had mentioned uh, contacting support at MyHeritage. And so that's one option for people if you still have questions later. Another option, um, which you guys might enjoy, would be accessing the MyHeritage user group on Facebook. Uh, and I'll just put that in the chat. Uh, so some of you might want to go there, join that group. Uh, not only is it a great resource for what we're talking about today, but generally anything about uh, my heritage, you can get answered there. Oh, so Murray was asking about um, changing the parameters for coloring and enhancing photos. And Masha, it seems like that you had uh, started to talk about how on the website that they can do that. So if he wants to fiddle with the settings, he would have to use, I mean, not the website, the, um, yeah, from a computer. Mm -hmm. So he can do that there. Yeah, he can actually open the photo that he has uh, colorized. And there he'll see uh, like a um, settings icon. Like uh, this is actually the colorization settings. And uh, there he'll be able uh, to uh, play with the setting of the colorization process. Maybe uh, change it to the way he likes it better. All right, I'm just going to run through all of my flagged photos already. Um, uh, not photos, uh, questions. Let's see. So can you create albums? Yes. Okay. Under the photo section, uh, you can actually view all the photos or go to the albums tab and create the albums and add the photos to the albums. And so how would you add a photo to the album? Do you have to go to the more button to do it or? No, no. Uh, once you're in the photo section, the default is actually the all photos tab, but uh, to the right, you'll see the albums tab. So once you go there, you can uh, tap the plus on the bottom to uh, create a new album. And then once you're inside the album, you can uh, choose uh, to add photos there. Okay, perfect. Um, hmm. Oh, here's an interesting question from Brian. He says, can we save individual faces from a multi-person photo? So say you had that uh, photo of the 10 people. Can you okay. pull one face out of that and just save that one face? We can do it once you enhance the photo. Because once you enhance, actually the algorithm will identify the faces in this uh, photo. And then once you tap the face you wish to save, you can go to the more uh, icon and uh, choose to save it to your mobile app, uh, to mo your mobile uh, photo. Okay, great. That's wonderful to know. Uh, let me just check here and see if there are any more questions. So some people have uh, some people are saying they have very old i iPads and they can't update them to twelve or above. So it seems like with those um, those pieces of equipment, they wouldn't be able to add the app since it doesn't meet the twelve or above criteria. I think that if they have downloaded the app, um, like if they already have it on the iPad, they can use it but it will just not support new features like um, um, the ones that we will have released uh, like today or so they can use the app but just not with the la latest features okay that's uh, like if they have already downloaded it all right uh, Gretchen wants to know if you have uploaded all your images can you still access these if you do not continue to have a subscription at my heritage um, meaning if you have a subscription and then you don't? Exactly. Um, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, you can. Like, we will not delete the account, but uh, 
will be a basic user. So that means that you'll be like you'll have limitations on the storage and the okay. other things. So, so they're not going to get rid of what you have, but you won't be able to add anything new pretty much is yeah. how yeah. it's going to work. Um, all right. Oh, let's see. Glenda is asking, can she upload TIFF files? Can she upload what, excuse me? Uh, a TIFF file. A TIFF files are very large, uncompressed files. Um, I'm not sure. TIFF uh, files? Uh, You're not familiar? Yeah, yeah, and I know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. I will have to check it as well. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, uh, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's see. Alexander wants to know if you get or send details via smart match, do you get the enhanced photos and recording? So it, will the smart match system share these if, if, if people upload them to their trees? No, we will share only the original photo. Like um, only if a person is a member and he enters, like have access um, to the photos of the family tree, he'll be he will be able to see the enhanced and colorized version. But uh, if uh, people get it to be a smart match, we uh, use the original version. Okay. Um, Kim, I don't know if you're going to know the answer to this, but Kim is asking: Is a membership through? Uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a limited account or an unlimited account? She's not sure. Um, I'm not sure as well. Okay. Um, let's see. I told you there were lots of questions here today, Masha. <laughs> <laughs> People were pretty excited about That's good. That's what they good, were yeah. seeing. So uh, they were, let's see. Oh, okay. Here's a, here's a good one from Graham. He says, if I have metadata already included in the properties of my original photo, will that be included when I upload to my heritage? Great question, Graham. Um, depends on which metadata, like, uh, and where you upload it from. So, like, if you upload it via an Android device and you have, like, a name for the photo on the mobile um, photos, then the name will probably stay. Um, it really depends, I think, on the scenario. Okay, so it sounds like he needs to do a little bit of testing with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that's going to... Um, yep. Um, let's see. Deborah is asking, can you add photos to an album from the mobile app? And we did actually discuss that, Deborah, and um, and Masha said, yes, you can add photos to an album from the mobile app, right? Yeah. Yeah, she walked us step by step through that. Uh, so this uh, presentation will be available uh, in a few hours if you want to replay it. Uh, I know one thing that the audience really loved was the step by step. and if you if you turned away, if you went and got a glass of water, or you didn't see the step by steps. Well, you can go back to the webinar recording, and you can watch Masha do it over and over and over again. <laughs> Just wait a couple <laughs> hours, and we will have the um, we'll have the replay up, and um, and it'll be available for you to access. All right, I think that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much, Masha. You did a terrific job and wonderful step-by-step -step instructions for our audience. They really appreciated that. There were a lot of comments in the chat about how they appreciated you walking them through how to do each step. And of course, uh, we want to thank MyHeritage for sponsoring this series. Without them, uh, we wouldn't have this or we wouldn't have our webinars at all. So a uh, great big thanks to MyHeritage. Also, thanks to our audience for being here today, especially to all the people who came here for the very first time. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Uh, the webinar will be available for free uh, as a recording from the FamilyTreeWebinars.com 
website uh, in just a few hours. Uh, so you can check it again there. We also have um, social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, all that, uh, where you can get a link to the replay. So that will alert you when it's ready. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.